What's going on, everybody? Happy Thanksgiving early to those of you who are in the United States and celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, hope you guys have a time to uh, relax and spend some time with family tomorrow. Let's go ahead and get into today's video. Um, I wanted to start this new series, um, and that series is my top five favorite window managers. Now, this isn't the top five best window managers overall. Um, well, I guess in my opinion it is, but um, that's just for me personally, so take what I'm saying here with a grain of salt. Um, but these are the ones that I have found that are the most enjoyable to use in my experience. Um, the ones that I found that I like the setup of, I like the documentation of, and I like the configuration of, and I like the features. Those are kind of the main criteria that I'm using to do this list is documentation, features, and configuration. So that being said, let's just jump into number five. These will be going in a uh, countdown order, starting with number five down to number one, number one being my favorite window manager. Um, there might be a honorable mention thrown in there. I haven't decided yet, but that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into this first one. Um, this first window manager is a automatic tiler. It is a great um great window manager it's very quick and it just kind of gets out of your way um, the configuration file on it is pretty basic pretty simple and easy to read it's got a lot of the features that you look for when you want a tiling window manager uh, whether that be scratch pads or um, different layouts um, speed and um, just cleanliness and ease of configuration um, the only downfalls i have with this window manager and what puts it at number five is the documentation isn't the greatest it's not bad but it isn't the greatest and the fact that i have one other issue with window sizing other than that, this is a really great window manager that I thoroughly enjoy using. I actually have this installed every time I um, redo my machine. Um, I have my main window managers that I live in all the time. Um, and then I also have several window managers that I just like to get in and play around in from time to time. And this is one of them. So whenever I rebuild my machine, this window manager always ends up back on my machine. And let's go ahead and launch a terminal. Let's zoom in. And let's run NeoFetch. And maybe you can read it, but right here it says Spectre WM. Now Spectre is, well, depending on how you pronounce it and how you say it, I've heard people say Spectrum, I've heard people say Spectre WM, I've heard people just say Spectre. I usually call it Spectre WM. But if you've never used this window manager before, it's basically got everything you need to actually um, have a successful and really clean system. And set up. Um, you can see we've got one window launched here and we can launch other windows and be in a master and stack um, which is probably my favorite of all layouts. Um, you can hit alt or the mod key and space and it will toggle this layout here which I thoroughly like as well and then you can go into full screen. Um, it gives you all the layouts that are pretty much necessary um, I guess not necessary but um, that are the basic layouts that people usually get with a window manager and the ones that people basically use. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that use a lot of other layouts. Um, there's people that like floating windows um, and all that kind of stuff. And so just for me personally, I like this because it's minimal on the layouts. Um, it's got the basic ones that I thoroughly enjoy using, the ones that I use all the time. Um, I'm not big on a million different layouts because, to be honest with you, they just take up space. I don't use any of them. It's just resources used on the machine. Um, I guess not even resources used, but just extra lines in my configuration file that I don't really need to have. Um, I usually only use the master and stack every once in a while. I will go to floating um, or full screen. But other than that, master and stack is usually what I use. Um, now, the difference between this and this, um, I do like this layout because a lot of times if I'm using Vim or something and I have long lines of code running across here and I need to open something else up down here, I do like this layout a little um, a little better at times than your normal master and stack. But that being said, it's got those the, the master and stack, just like most window managers do um, on the automatic tilers. Um, the one thing that I was saying with the uh, window sizing is you can see that I can float and have scratch pads, but the one thing I haven't been able to figure out how to do is create a scratch pad that opens at a certain window geometry. Um, you can have float or you can have float anywhere, which basically will just automatically spawn your window wherever it wants to. Um, but I don't see any um, X, Y coordinate um configurations and I don't see any window geometry configuration so I can't have different size scratch pads once they're created and opened you can then manually resize them all but I would like the ability to be able to open a window at a certain spot on my screen at a certain size and that's just not um, a function that I've found available or a feature I found available on Spectre WM 
But other than that, it does have them. So you can see I've got my scratch pad there. Um, I have my, oops, I've, I ran a uh, simple screen recorder off that. So um, that's my launch menu. I have mod shift I, that's my void source packages. So you can open windows floating and they all open the same size and you can float them anywhere on the screen or in the middle. Um, but that's about the extent of that. Let's go ahead and jump into the configuration file though. If you want to install, um, Spectre WM, I believe it's in most of the repos. So like in uh, void, I just did sudo xbps-install-s Spectre WM. If you're on Pac-Man or um, on Pac-Man, on Arch or an Arch-based distribution, you can use yay or you could use Pac-Man um, and do it that way. I'm pretty sure it's on Debian. You could use the app. Um, if not, if we go over to my second workspace here and we go ahead and launch a web browser, um, we can actually go to spectrewm.org, which just brings you to the GitHub page. Sorry, this will take a second because I'm sitting out in my car, but and this is the basic documentation for Spectre WM online. Um, it, it takes you to the GitHub page. Um, you have uh, the current installation guide you can click on here. And Arch Linux, you can see you can install it from Pac-Man. Um, Debian, yep, you can use app get install. It's un available on Nix. Um, it's available in the Void repo as well. So this isn't the only places it's available. Um, I'm pretty sure whatever distribution you're running, you should be able to get it installed from the repo. If not, you can obviously come over here to GitHub and install it through GitHub. Um, it does have a brief tutorial right here that kind of breaks down a few of the different items, um, getting started, terminology, uh, master area, stack area, workspaces, region, um, keyboard shortcuts, navigating workspaces. It just gives you some basic overview of a few of the different things. Um, gives you some common tricks. Um, but other than that, that is about it for the documentation online. If you want more in-depth documentation, what you got to do is you have to open up a terminal and type in mans specter wm. And when you do that, it brings up the man page, which gives you quite a bit of information. It is pretty thorough um, and you can find what you need here. When I say the documentation isn't the greatest, um, I don't mean that you can't find what you need because um, I haven't had any issues that I haven't been able to resolve just by looking through the documentation that's available. So it is decent documentation. It's just um, something a little more than a man page uh, would be nice at some point. But if you look in the man page, you can see um, the configuration files are, it's going to look for um, XDG config home, SpectreWM, SpectreWM.conf, which if we go ahead and launch this here and I CD into SpectreWM, um, you can see it's in my home jake.config SpectreWM location. So home.config SpectreWM, SpectreWM.conf, or you can have it straight in your home directory at .spectreWM.conf. Um, if the user configuration file is not found, it's going to look for it in um, etc xdg spectrewm spectrewm.com or in etc slash spectrewm.com. So once you install it, what you can do is just copy this file right here, this etc spectrewm.com or this um, etc xdg spectrewm.com. Copy, copy that into one of these locations here and then you can start editing from there. So if we go back over to a third workspace here and we launch a terminal, let's zoom in and we're going to cd into etc and then I'm going to vim into spectrewm.com. And what you can see here is this is the basic um, configuration file that they give you and you can see right at the top here it says please read the man page before editing this file. Um, and then this gives you the um, uh, path to the website and then it also gives you a little bit of a note here about the RGB color values anyway. Um, but anyway, this is your basic uh, configuration file. You can just go through here once this is copied over and uncomment some things, or you can just kind of take this and get an idea of what's going on and then open your man page and create your own from there. But this gives you the basic stuff like workspace limit, focus mode and all that stuff, warping the pointer, um, uh, window decorations here, and regions here for your screen, um, borders, and then your bar settings. One thing about Spectre WM is it does come with its own bar. Um, you can see up at the top of my screen, I'm running Polybar, um, just because on anything outside of Xmo Bar or Xmonad, I tend to run Polybar, um, just because I like the configuration file of it. I can have one configuration file basically and start it for any window manager. Um, so that way, I give that gets that little bit of um, just uh, cohesiveness to all of my different window managers on my system. But you can create your own bar, um, or it does come equipped with its own bar, Inspector WM. You do need to create a shell script called bar action. Um, 
and you create that and actually call that script from um, your configuration file, which I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but the downside to the Spectre WM uh, bar on its own is the fact that in that shell script, the output from that script has a character limit. You can only have so many characters showing, otherwise things start getting jumbled up and um, it just causes problems. So that's kind of one of the downsides to Spectre WM with the bar. I hate to call that a downside. In fact, I should hesitate to call that a downside because it's not, because you can get everything you need in that bar. You just have to be a little more careful about what you're doing. So it does come enabled with a bar, um, but then it gives you just kind of a breakdown on how to auto start programs, different layouts, um, and how to um, open different layouts on different areas, and then goes down here and just gives you some quirk ideas. And I will actually go over those here in just a second. Um, but as you can see in the man page, uh, when you go through the configuration files, um, this is this auto run is how you launch an application at startup. Um, it gives you all the different breakdown on the bar, the bar action, the bar action expand, bar at bottom, bar border. So you can come through here on the man page and you can look through stuff and it gives you an idea of what it should look like or what you sh what uh, options you have. But what else is cool about it is once you go through, it gives a pretty detailed description of what um, what each thing does. But if you keep scrolling down and scrolling through stuff, um, a lot of times what you'll get is, sorry, I know I'm just kind of scrolling past everything here, but I'm not going to touch on everything. Um, once you come down to the bottom down here, you can actually start getting some, um, here's all your key bindings. Sorry, as I scroll down through everything, but here's all the key bindings. So you have a list of all the key bindings that come stock with it. Um, but once you come down to the bottom here, you have some examples. Um, you have some examples on how to write stuff up, on how to um, like windows can be floated or unfloated um, so you have examples down here on how to do this um, and so an example above the quirk entry would be quirk firefox navigator equals float this is just gives you an example how to write out to make firefox float um, so you do have examples in the bottom here so it's not just like here here's the description of what you need to do um, it also gives you an example on, okay, well, here's the different options you have. Now, if we'll come down here, this is how you, how you write them up and handle them. So like I said, the documentation isn't the greatest, but it isn't horrible. You can do what you need to do and find what you need to find in it. Um, and so, but I do say that because out of all of my top five, I would say that, uh, Spectre WM probably has the least polished, um, documentation. So let's go ahead and get out of there and let's jump into my configuration file. So let's CD into spectrewm.conf and we're going to vim into, or we're going to CD in spectrewm and then let's vim into my spectrewm.conf. Now, right here we have my auto run. This is how you auto start programs. So I have my power manager and PyCom, my wallpaper and my applets up here in the corner. I have those all started here with the auto run command. So you do the auto run equals WS, that's workspace. And then you put the workspace in here, which is one on all of them because none of them are actually opening a graphical program. Um, and then you just do a colon and then what you're trying to run. Now, say you wanted to open Firefox on workspace four immediately when you logged into your system, you could put auto run. Um, actually, I'll just type it out for you. You could do in um, auto run equals WS and then you do square bracket and say four square bracket and then do Firefox, just kind of like that. And that would be a way to set up to have Firefox open on Workspace 4 the minute you logged into your window manager. So it's really kind of cool the way they handled that. Um, the next we have a workspace limit. So you can change this if you saw in the example configuration file, this said 22. Um, you can have many workspaces on this. Um, I don't even use nine workspaces. I know I have it set to nine, but that's just because of what my poly bar is set up as. Um, but you can have many more than that or many less than that. It doesn't matter. So you get to set the workspace limit. You have your focus modes. Um, you have warp focus and warp pointer. So whenever you open a new window, it's going to either warp focus to that window or warp the pointer to that window. Um, I have both those turned off. Uh, personally, this is your borders. So your window border and your tile gap and stuff like that. So um, you can see I have tile gap set to five. So if I launch a couple windows, you can see I just have a small gap peeking through there. Um, but you can set that and uh, do that nice and easily there with the tile gap. Now this is the bar action. So right here you have bar action equals, and this is the path. Like I have the path right here set to my polybar launch script. But if you created a bar action.sh to use um, Spectre WM's built-in um, bar, this is where you would put the path to that. 
and then it would run that up here. Now there are a few things that come automatically on the bar. Um, your workspaces, um, your workspace numbers will be over here. Um, I believe a clock maybe, but um, that's all set through right here. And if you go through the documentation, you'll see how to set all that. Um, so like you got bar delay one second after startup, um, got bar color selected, got bar color, excuse me, you got a bar border. So this is all just basic stuff. You got the bar format. And if you go into the documentation again you'll see what each one of these is um, workspaces clock whatever else um, so you can see the workspace indicator is going to list the current workspace then it's going to list the active workspace and it's going to mark the current and it's going to print the names so basically it's going to give you the current workspace the active workspace current and then it's going to print out what's open on that workspace you can have bar at bottom right here if you set that to one. Um, stack enabled, clock enabled. Um, so this right here is going to enable the clock. You can turn the clock on or off. You can change the format of the clock right here. Um, and you can do a few other things with the uh, maximize hide bar, window class enabled, window instance enabled, um, just a few different things. Again, um, if you go to the man page and look all these up, this is all going to be in there and it's going to give you a pretty good um, idea of what each one does. Um, then you set your mod key. Um, I'm a mod one key user, alt key mod user. Um, I don't use the super key very often, um, if at all. Um, my thumb just doesn't bend that well that went that direction. Um, setting programs is pretty pretty darn simple. You basically type program, then you give the program a name like the browser, um, and then you do equals, and then the program you want to run. So if I wanted to launch Brave Browser Stable, which is what Brave Browser is called on the um, on Void when you use the Void source package to install it. Um, I run a program and then square bracket and inside that square brackets I run browser and then it equals brave browser stable and then down below that you just put bind and then inside square brackets the name of the program you just declared and you do equals and then put in the key binding you want. So I do mod shift B launches my browser which is brave browser. Um, I have my scratch pad here, which I just called scratch. So again, program scratch equals, and then I have a path to my script for my um, or, um, um, window manager agnostic scratch pads. And then I run the scratch pad selection out of that. And then I bind scratch, which is this program here to mod return. So if I hit mod return, you see my scratch pad. And then what you do, if you want it to float, is you do a quirk, which is pretty cool. You can do different things with quirks, but um, you can make them float. And so I do quirk, and then you have the class name, the instance, which is um, optional, and then the name, which is op optional. So you have class, instance, name. Class is required, instance and name are optional. I just put all three of them in there because I use al Alacrity for other things as well. So I don't want it toggling or floating Alacrity every time. So I have a class of Alacrity with an instance of Alacrity with a name of Scratchpad and it's gonna float. And so it puts right in the middle of my screen. Now, if I would put float plus anywhere here and I launched it, it would probably launch it all the way up here in the corner or over in this corner or whatever. But since I just have float, it just centers it. So again, um, same thing down here uh, with my launch menu. So program menu and then path to my script and then launch selection and then bind menu that I just declared here and then mod shift D and it's going to do my quirk of alacrity, alacrity launch and it's going to float it as well. So if I do mod shift D, it's going to launch it right here. Um, this is my void source packages. So this is just going to install or going to launch my void source packages. So if I do mod shift I again, this is my void source packages um, script that launches and lists the void source packages. Uh, so I have that one floating as well. A normal program again, uh, program term equals alacrity bind term to mod shift return. Um, and then down here you have um, <clears throat> all of the normal key bindings that come with it for window manipulation and workspace changing and resizing and cycling through workspaces and all that. So all that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can do all the basic stuff you can do on just about any window manager um, as far as um, switch to workspaces, switch your open window to a different workspace. Um, you can resize workspaces uh, and do all the basic stuff that you can do on just about any other window manager. But that being said, that's the stuff I really like about um, Spectre WM. The fact that it has everything I need, it's small, it stays out of my way, it's got the ability to do the options that I want and the features that I want, but it doesn't get too crazy and carried away. Uh, the configuration file is pretty readable and pretty easy to figure out. The documentation is okay, uh, which is one of its bad marks, but um, 
in reality, it's not too horrible. And um, you're able to figure out everything you need to figure out with the man page. And um, I will say one thing, the, doc, the community that I've actually had to deal with, which has been very few people, um, I haven't really dealt with anybody on this one, I don't think, actually. Um, but I have read a few things. And from what I can see, the community that uses Spectre WM is very respectful and they're very polite and they're very helpful. So I haven't had any issues or seen any issues with the community for Spectre WM. And so it's just one of those things that I would highly recommend, not to a novice beginning user, but maybe somebody who's had a little experience with window managers and wants to give something else a try. Um, I really suggest checking out Spectre WM if you haven't. It's a great window manager. It's um, a great one. It's easy to use easy to configure and um, it's it's really stable and really great so that being said that's number five uh, be on the lookout in the next couple days I'm gonna be moving on to number four and we're gonna count down this window manager list all the way down to number one with a possible um, honorable mention in there so that being said i hope you guys all have a great rest of your day enjoy the holiday if you're celebrating thanksgiving don't eat too much i know i'm gonna i always do um but try not to eat too much and uh enjoy that turkey nap you get at the end of the meal so you guys have a great day great rest of the week god bless